And now we'll move to our 1035 timed item, facilities management, mid-year update for fiscal year 2022-23 five-year capital improvement plan for facilities management. This is to receive a presentation on the status of our five-year capital improvement plan for facilities. Mr. Steve Newsom presenting. Good morning um, and happy Valentine's Day to all of you. I am Steve Newsom, uh, Director of Facilities Management, and I have a PowerPoint presentation on our mid-year capital update. <clears throat> I wanted to start this off with uh, showing you some of the significant milestones I'm sure that you all recall um, that have occurred over the past year. Um, our HHSC uh, groundbreaking, which is moving along extremely rapidly in, in construction. The Lotus Behavioral Health Center grand opening, which um, provides uh, mental health crisis um, care for those in, in uh, South Placer. The Fruitvale School Museum grand opening, which will uh, provide a, a third grade focused curriculum for uh, school visitors, focusing on the 1888 to 1946 history of uh, Fruitvale School when it functioned as a schoolhouse. Um, and then the Mercy at Rock Creek grand opening, 79 affordable apartments on the DeWitt campus. And then our tier one infrastructure construction award project, <clears throat> which uh, will replace water, uh, stormwater, and um, sewer lines throughout the, the DeWitt campus that have been in place for 80 plus years. So we, we've never been busier in facilities management. It, it is absolute, when I was putting this together, it, it was uh, really stunning that um, under construction right now, we have nearly $150 million worth of work, and that does not include the um, SB projects down at the jail who are about to begin construction. All in all, with our, our planning, our renovation, our rehabilitation projects, we are nearly at a quarter of a billion dollars worth of projects, which is mind-boggling right now. So I'll go into all of these um, during the, the presentation, but I just wanted to, to kind of give that kind of uh, perspective of, of what's going on throughout the county, some amazing projects that are, are um, greatly needed and greatly Greatly appreciated. <clears throat> so the question has come up, well, you know, why don't we do more of this work in-house? There's a tremendous amount of work that we do. And when we look at the, the structure of our capital improvements division, there's a tremendous number of architects, licensed architects that are on staff. And I don't know when the, the org chart was created and when these positions were put into place. It was long before my time. But I've learned over the years that it works extremely well from the perspective of variations in workload. When we have uh, less projects in place, we're able to, because we have architects who are educated, trained, experienced at, at doing projects, we're able to do some of those ourselves in-house. So we're not fluctuating our, our staff numbers um, but we're, we're really kind of changing um, what roles are, are being played. So today, with the amount of work that we have underway now, we're able to manage a lot more work than we could ever do ourselves, um, and that is just because of the, the, uh, the talent that we, we have in place, um, that they're able to, to manage several projects with outside consultants um, who are um, you know, more equipped to, to do a greater amount of production for us. So that's really an, a, an explanation of, of uh, how we operate in the capital improvements division. Um, jumping into some of the projects, uh, the SB863 mental health facility, uh, this, this is a, just a, a fantastic opportunity to, to uh, give another tool in the sheriff's uh, tool belt for helping those who are involved in the, the justice system who uh, need housing programming and treatment space um, for mental health issues. 
And um, this is a, a project that will break ground uh, later in the spring of this year. And um, it is a project that we work jointly with at Senate Bill 863. So we work jointly with the state who are funding a portion of this project. And one of the downsides of getting state money is that you are you know, tied to the, the hoops that they, they put before you and, and the time that it takes for them to review those and, and uh, so forth. So we, we worked very diligently to jump through all those hoops. Uh, and unfortunately, on the, the state side, their response time, changing in staff, other issues have just dragged the project on for more than six years. If you look at the timeline, project would have been built and in use for several years now if, uh, if it had moved along as it was in originally intended to move along. So the project was impacted by uh, the escalation. And unfortunately, this was a time of, of some significant construction escalation. On the flip side, we were fortunate that um, we were able to obtain funds through the American Rescue Plan Act. And I have for better clarification of, of the buckets of money that are contributing to this. While the state will provide $9.5 million for this, our general fund reserves will, will provide $4.3 million, public safety fund $3.8 million, and then $5 million from the American Rescue Plan Act. <clears throat> so we're excited for this project to begin construction. You can see in the site plan that it will be in the bottom right corner of the South Placer Adult Correctional Facility, um, which will, will uh, um, you know, really make for a, an appropriate location um, on the site for this facility to be placed. The next project, which is the SB 844 Vocational Center, um, this, this is another just tremendous opportunity to, to help those who, you know, unfortunately have, have maybe made some bad decisions to get them uh, trained with vocational behavior and life, life skills uh, training. So this will be a 120-bed facility. The mental health facility I didn't mention was a 45-bed facility. This is a 120-bed facility that will provide the training uh, needed. It will go to the east of the medium security facility shown by the star in this picture. And a more clarified breakdown of the, the costs here, 2.1 million will come from general fund reserves, 8.3 million from the public safety fund, and 3.1 million from the capital facility impact fees with uh, an anticipated 30 million um, coming from the state. The next project, this is the clerk recorder elections building, otherwise known as Atherton because it's on Atherton in Rockland. And this is a photo I took last week. This is a picture of the lobby where the public will, will come when they have business to do at the, uh, the clerk recorder um, or elections office there. And the, the picture is a nice picture, but it really doesn't do it justice. It is going to be beautiful. The, the wood uh, ceiling work, and you can see the louvers above the, uh, the overhang there, the, the light fixtures and all. It's really a very timeless, but a very attractive facility. So that one is nearing completion now, and um, it, it is a, a project that I know there's been a lot of interest in this project because of, of some of the costs that have, have come in, and you all approved um, the uh, change order this morning under consent. We, when we originally did our cost estimate, it was very accurate. And um, in fact, it was a little under our low bidder and so we were able to add some scope to the project, some HVAC and, and roof replacement. And so uh, we, were, we were pleased with that. But um, this is a developer-built building. Every building is unique. Developer-built buildings are often unique in unique ways. Um, sometimes uh, decisions are made that are, are maybe cost-saving at the time, uh, and then we don't we don't discover them until later when we start doing a project and we uncover things that are sometimes shocking. So, so we were hit with, with some unknowns um, on this project that, that caused the, the cost to go up. We were also hit with the, the whole supply chain issue on this project that really impacted a lot of the electrical 
equipment um, on it. And with that extended uh, the construction period, which then added costs, of course. And I think, a, I think a lesson that we could learn from this and take away is that if, if we have the opportunity, if we have the time and the ability when we own a building, especially a building where we know it, it may, it may uh, have some, some, some surprises for us, we might want to do a little bit of destructive investigation, you know, if we know we want to do something that's going to be connected to a, a, a wall, we might open up that wall uh, ahead of actually doing the project just so that we can try to head those things off. Um, but other than that, um, it's going to be an absolutely beautiful uh, facility and it'll, it'll serve um, the CRE department for should be decades to come. Um, it will also uh, provide space in that building for the, the uh, assessor, which I'll, I'll get to in a, in a few moments. The Health and Human Services Center, which is under construction that I, I know you all are all familiar with, and if you don't go by every day right now, <laughs> um, it is changing dramatically um, because they are moving so quickly. And this, when, when completed, of course, will consolidate um, a lot of the divisions uh, in Health and Human Services and provide just a, a magnificent facility for the public uh, to come to and, and uh, receive services from. It's a very flexibly designed building, lots of open space. Um, it's a rectilinear building, so laying out of furniture, et cetera, is, is uh, um, you know, very, very nicely done. The bottom left picture here is Dusty. Dusty is a little bit bigger than a Roomba. And what Dusty did was via Bluetooth and computer uh, communication, Dusty laid out all the walls. And so you can see some of the marks on the concrete underneath Dusty. And this was, this was really a, a, a first. I've never seen this done before. Um, but extremely successful, super accurate. It, it puts little marks on the floor. This is where your studs go. This is where the drywall will be. And um, it, it uh, saves a tremendous amount of, of uh, time. And also, you know, once it's done, it can, you know, things could be checked um, just to make sure it's, it's done accurately. But um, okay, so Steve, can I just clarify? Yeah. So instead of a person doing that, the um, piece of equipment is programmed with the blueprints or the diagram or what have you and then right. it goes ahead and does what a person would ordinarily right. do it and do it a lot more precisely yes as far as measuring etc right so a person Your still is a, a person is still controlling you know dusty so it, it you know dusty doesn't work in the middle of the night or something like that when there's no one there it, it does require someone to uh, to um, you know, give it, give it direction and then it does its thing. So anyway, I thought that was a pretty interesting uh, tidbit here. This view on the bottom right is looking east down the spine of the, the building. And starting at the top, you'll see the, the skylights that are north facing skylights. And so this will just flood the, the center of the building with natural light. Um, you can see that inside the orange safety fencing, um, it, it's open to the first floor. So, and they, the architects calls, call this uh, collaboration street. So there's spots there where you can meet, sit down, talk with, with someone um, about things, and it just uh, offers a, a really inviting uh, space to, to communicate with each other and collaborate. So <clears throat> I have a few more pictures of this project because it's fascinating. On the left here is, is the crane that um, is installing some of the first panels. You can see the, the little yellow uh, guy there, uh, like a great all. Um, he's, he's helping position um, what the crane is supporting, which is one of these panels. On the picture on the right, you see the crane in the background, and it's picking up a panel off of a truck. And in the foreground is the next panel. So the panels are so big that only one panel per truck comes. So, uh, you know, there's this, this progression of, of delivery of panels as they're, they're needed. <clears throat> this is a, a, a picture that Eric Bergen took with the, his drone. 
and it shows those first panels um, going into position. You can see them down on the first floor there. And this is uh, above the Auburn Justice Center looking at the building um, from above Richardson. This, I put this picture in here. Again, Eric Bergen took this photo. This is just amazing how huge this crane is. And it's extremely expensive. <laughs> So it's thousands and thousands of dollars a day to use this crane. So they are moving as quickly as they can to put all of these panels into place. And by the end of this week, the, the, the building will, will probably look like it's done from the outside, although it, they're just really getting into the work on the inside. This is a close-up view of some of the panels that were placed on the second floor. Um, they're concrete. Uh, with brick and the windows are already installed. All this is done at the factory, which is um, Clark Pacific. They are magicians with concrete. They are the, the best in the, the area, if not the state. So the, the quality um, and the, the craftsmanship and the, the just the, the aesthetics are, are phenomenal um, for that. So please uh, drive by there whenever you can. I know that, that the roads are narrowed and that it's you know, a little bit more difficult to get around. Oops. Um, next project is what we call our Tier 1 Infrastructure Project, um, which is replacement of water, sewer, and stormwater uh, lines throughout the campus, the PCGC campus. Um, as I mentioned before, these are 80-plus-year-old lines that have been problematic. We ha There's water leaks constantly on our campus that this will help remedy, which will save us uh, you know, money and, of course, save, save water that would otherwise just go away. Um, this project was a, a really successful collaboration between facilities management and the, the Department of Public Works, who, who helped us and they worked hand in hand with us on, on some of the design decisions because there was a lot of challenges with the rock on our campus. And, potential for um, expense and unknowns, again, which we want to try to avoid as much as possible. This project came in over our estimate by a, a good amount. And, um, you know, that was a, um, oops, that was a, a concern of ours. And so we reached out to the, the, the bidders and our successful contractor, Doug Vierkamp, and um, learned that, for one thing, when the bidding was taking place, the, the whole supply chain escalation was a big concern to contractors because they would be ordering um, their, their uh, product, all, all this piping, and they, weren't, they didn't know what the cost would be when uh, they were going to order it. So uh, that was a, a challenge for them. But then we also found out that there were some, some constraints that we put on them in their operations that also added to the cost of it. So we've met with um, Beer Camp staff, and, and so far it's been extremely collaborative with them. And we're looking at changes in how uh, they can work running two crews, working longer hours, still within the, the uh, regulations for the county. Um, and we're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars that we will receive back once we go through all of these opportunities for for uh, cost savings, so so that's the 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 plus side I think on this project, the kind of the silver lining in it, as well as just the improvements to the, the utility infrastructure. The Tahoe Justice Center, uh, which has of course long been uh, on the radar um, for the county, and the 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 building itself, as as many of us know, was built prior to the 1960 Winter Olympics. It was never built to be what it is utilized as today. And of course, over time, with uh, growth of the county, with changes in regulations, requirements, et cetera, uh, the, the building has, has reached um, and surpassed its useful life. Um, there's always been, a, I think, an assumption that we're going to build a new Tahoe Justice Center. And there was an assumption that it would probably be in some different location. So over the years, there's been locations considered, looked at, um, and uh, kind of test fit and, and so forth. But a few years ago, I had a meeting with all of the uh, 
departments and agencies that will be and are in the facility today. And overwhelmingly, all of them said, we would rather stay at this site. And so since then, we've done uh, a lot of work with uh, TRPA uh, to see if that's even possible because the, the program for the new building is much larger, of course, um, than the existing building. The existing building, the, the county has about 9,200 square feet and the courts have about 2,100 square feet. So it's about an 11,300 square foot building currently. The proposed project, the county has about 35,000 square feet and the courts about 15,000 square feet. So roughly 50,000 square feet, much, much larger. But in our kind of preliminary test fits, again, um, we're seeing that, that uh, this is quite feasible to go on the site. And, and we've worked out some site logistics so that, um, and working with the courts, we, we have a great relationship with, with them, um, and they understand that their timeline may differ from ours, and theirs is typically going to be slower than our timeline. So we're looking at a, a potential solution that is two buildings connected um, probably with a, a bridge between the two so that in custodies can be taken over to court and so forth, and staff could also uh, go from one building to the other. That would allow the county to, to move our project at, at the pace that, that works for us, and it would allow the courts to move at their pace. And what we would probably do, if the county project comes first, we would have a, a, a space that would accommodate the courts so they could just move 50 feet um, and come over and temporarily use a space within our building while the existing building is torn down and a new courts building is put into place. Then. No, no one would leave the site at all, um, and so there would not be the expense of remodeling some other facility somewhere for uh, use for a couple of years. Um, so we think that that solution, um, at least at this stage, is, is a, a real strong uh, possibility. And um, as we move forward with this year, um, we're going to focus on the, the environmental um, uh, review and uh, you know public outreach and so forth that that uh, the project requires so um, okay moving on to Dollar Creek Crossing um, so this is a, a, a project that the county is working with related Pacific to plan achievable and workforce housing um, with affordable rental apartments and for sale homes and at this time we're, we're working with Related Pacific to really narrow down the, the product type, quantities, size, configuration, et cetera, that could go on this site, as well as uh, working with TRPA and Caltrans um, to meet their requirements. So more to come on that project as, as uh, development is um, advancing. Okay, renovation projects that we do, these are projects that are requests from different departments based on their needs, either to improve efficiency, security, comfort, or a customer and employee experience. And we're allocated roughly one and a quarter million dollars a year to accomplish these projects. And I've listed some of the projects below. And um, we're in our world, we're so accustomed to uh, on the DeWitt campus, the building numbers and not the address. And I know that the public and, and others don't know what these buildings are. So um, building 305 in the first line there, that's at 11471 F Avenue. Building 210 is at 2855 Second Street. And then building 306 is at 11477 E Avenue. And some of the uh, projects at the bottom, the ongoing renovations, uh, like our ADA improvements, those are things that we have a, a dollar amount that's, that's allocated. And throughout the year, we look at the highest priorities, the, the ones that impact uh, the public the most. It could be as simple as some signage changes to maintain um, our compliance. 
uh, handrails, et cetera. Um, so those, so I, didn't, I didn't list all of the, the projects. There's, there's um, several, but they, you know, um, they vary throughout the year as, as we uh, accomplish them and, and allocate the funds um, where the highest priorities are. Rehabilitation projects, these are projects that are really informed by our VFA software system which is a system that uh, assessed all of our facilities and gives an estimated timeline for the need to replace them, whether it's a roof or HVAC system or, or uh, carpeting or what have you. So basically it's a, it's a system that, that taps us on the shoulder and says, hey, you might wanna check this. We then check it. Projects may uh, occur more quickly, they may occur later, or they may not occur at all, uh, depending on our, uh, how we assess them. So this is the, the rundown of, of where we are with this uh, past year's funding. 17% uh, are completed, 46% are in construction or bidding, and then 37% are in planning or design. And then down at the bottom here, 90% uh, of the FY21-22 projects are complete, and the remainder are in planning, design, or construction. And those projects, I've got a couple of photos of some success stories. This is 1000 Sunset down in Rockland um, that HHS um, resides in there. This is a roof replacement. You can see the, the before picture at the top and then uh, the after picture below that. And uh, this, this project turned out very successfully and it, it will provide a, a uh, dry, um, <laughs> environment for 25 years uh, to come. So that's uh, the first project. And then this one, this is the, the historic Auburn Courthouse. And this is a roof replacement. I think when people think of the courthouse and you say roof replacement, I think people think of the dome. It's, and it's not the dome, it's, it's the rest of the, the, the building. And um, the, what's noteworthy here is that it, it wasn't simply a, a roof replacement. We also replaced skylights. But then if you look in the after picture, beyond the skylight, you see two flues coming up. Those, as well as some other architectural components, were rehabilitated um, or replaced in kind. And we used a, a historic uh, consultant to be in compliance with the Secretary of the Interior's um, guidelines for historic preservation. So that was a successful project. Another collaboration with the courts because it was ongoing while there were court uh, operations going too. So um, very good um, so, you know, story of communication and, and cooperation between the two agencies. Here's some projects that are in planning and I often, I, you know, before I, I had not necessarily included a lot of the planning projects in this presentation simply because some of them were just not far along whether it was budget scope or both but I thought I'd bring these forward to you the assessor um, here this is a photo of Atherton um, today how it looks with the the remodel the sign is is already there on the building um, the assessor will move out of of uh, what we call building B which is the building next to the Santucci um, courthouse and um, they'll move into uh, the upper floor of of the uh, Atherton building next to that is the district attorney and by the assessor moving out of this building B where the the DA also resides it gives them an opportunity to uh, expand their their needs um, and including their um, MDIC their multi disciplinary interview center which is another very valuable resource that, that we provide. It is focused on uh, children who are victims of abuse and it creates an environment for them to, to talk with uh, you know, a forensic interviewer um, to find out um, from their perspective just, just what's going on uh, potentially. So that, that's you know, going to be uh, another great tool for, for our DA to use. Bottom left, the HHS Adult System of Care Crisis Center. Um, our HHS team is 
very resourceful at going out and getting grants, finding uh, monies and opportunities. And so this, this is one where they have received a grant and then they're waiting to hear, I believe, on the other grant. But there's two wings at the DeWitt Center um, adjacent to the chapel, so in between B and C Avenue, that um, with a uh, remodel um, that would, would take place, it would provide um, some mental health care for those who are having crisis um, issues uh, at the time. So again, another, another strong um, just offering to our, our community. Next to that, the PCGC warehouse and mobile command vehicle enclosure. Uh, if you've ever seen the mobile command vehicle, it's, it's huge and it is extremely expensive and uh, it doesn't need to sit in the weather <laughs> for the amount of money that it costs. So this warehouse that we're planning, which is just to the north of the juvenile hall um, on B Avenue. So if you're going down B towards the animal services center, it would be on your left before you get to the animal center. Um, so um, that would provide warehousing space for any department, um, you know, from in the county. And it would also provide this kind of multi-use space for the sheriff's office. They could store the uh, vehicle there. They can then also pull it out and do some um, training with their staff, whether it's close quarters, combat type uh, work, that sort of thing that that uh, in a, a much safer environment than, than they've had in the past. Next to that, um, the waterfall and avalanche of moves uh, that we've named them. The waterfall being down here, uh, and, and that is triggered by the new HHS building as well as uh, Atherton. So with the new HHS building and um, Atherton being completed, there will be people moving out of uh, the CDRC building as well as the finance and administration building and some other um, wings and uh, rented leased space. Um, so that then gives us the opportunity to backfill those spaces with other departments or divisions to create better consolidation um, and be as efficient as we can with the resources we already have. The, the new um, HHS building will be a zero net energy building, meaning that the solar panels in its parking lot will produce as much electricity over the course of a year as the building will use in that same time frame. So <clears throat> we already are paying the utilities for the CDRC and the FAB. Um, so we're going to move uh, people into those, those spaces. And then the, the avalanche, which is up in the Tahoe area, the, hence the snow reference, um, is a similar um, exercise where, where we're trying to, to find um, what's, what's the, the best location the, that accommodates future growth, um, what are the facilities that we have now, what do we need to do to, to improve that and, and set us on a course for decades to come. Both of these projects will initially be informed um, through a uh, contract that that the CEO's office is has uh, issued that um, is is a, a firm that will help us with projections, staffing projections for um, decades to come. That along with uh, interviews that we have held with with staff as well. Then this last slide here called unresolved projects, which, for lack of a better term, is is just uh, things that we we want on your radar. Um, because they are uh, potentially coming forward. The first one, an administration building. As, as we know, we completed a um, master plan at the PCGC campus. In that master plan, there was a proposed a new administration building, which would replace the domes and the domes annex. Um, but it was not a, in an early phase of that master plan implementation. There have been a lot of things that have occurred, uh, you know, issues with this building itself, um, as well as, as uh, just, I think, a, a kind of a, a built-up frustration with a lot of the, the, the uh, um, issues that, that occur here at, at this building. So 
that's something that we want you all to consider as we look forward. Is this, is this something that we want to, to move ahead, move it um, further along sooner? Um, to the right of that, the DeWitt Theater. Um, as you're aware, the um, DeWitt Community Complex Group has a desire to, to save and renovate and expand on the existing theater. And um, your board uh, gave them a, an extended timeline to, to do such. And they have uh, they've developed a, a plan for what they would like to do, um, complete with cost estimate, and then um, also an operations plan um, for how they would operate the theater. And I know that they would like to come before the board and present that for consideration. Um, bottom left, library grant. This, this is a photo of a study room that was recently completed at the Auburn Library. It's beautiful um, space there, very flexible space for them. So Mary George has um, been successful in receiving a grant for $4.9 million for the Auburn Library for some infrastructure improvements. It's a matching grant that would require the county to provide an equal uh, match. She's also um, looking at pursuing a, a grant for the Kings Beach Library. Um, so that, that is to come uh, in the future. We'll get news on that and, and see what, what that will lead us uh, down towards. Um, bottom right, the Cincinnati Solar. The property that the county has um, near Rockland and Roseville on Cincinnati Avenue um, is currently a, a um, vacant lot basically, and uh, it's a, a depressed area, um, <clears throat> would re and if we were to develop something on it, would require a tremendous amount of money to fill it to get high enough. Um, so we were looking at it as an opportunity for a uh, solar, a ground-mounted solar field that doesn't, doesn't matter if the, if, if the uh, ground level is, is low. And this would be through a, a program that PG&E has, however, it is nearing its capacity. So this is an issue of, of time is of the essence. It would allow us to put a very large array down there that we could then say the electricity generated there can go to this address, that address, that address to offset the use of those locations and um, get the entire county much, much closer to a zero net energy. And with the escalation of PG&E rates and everyone's rates, you know, Roseville's also going up, um, you know, this, the savings here on this site would be in the tens of millions of dollars over the life of the, the uh, um, panels. With that, I've spoken enough. So if there are questions, I'm happy to take them now. I'll start off. Well, okay. first of all, thank you very much, Steve. Uh, you and your team are very busy, and we have a lot going on, and we're fortunate that we actually are able to do all this work. Uh, so I, I really appreciate the update. I, ha I have a question for you. Um, you know, we had an opportunity to go out to Burton Creek a couple of weeks ago yes. and see the site, and you know, that location was built 60 years ago and very temporary, right? And it is cramped and it is terrible. Um, as everyone acknowledges and has for a very long time. I think that was even part of the grand jury yes. report follow-up that <laughs> when are you going to replace Burton Creek? So it's terrific to see us moving forward. And, you know, as I think about it, right, it's a $50 million proposal and there'll be some dollars offset for the courts with through the probably the state of California, right? Um, but it's a very small footprint now. Um, and definitely too small, so I acknowledge that. Um, but looking at the increase in size, it's more than a four-time increase in size. And, and I, lo I look at it and I go, it's a big cost. Is there a way to scale it down? Um, because do we need that big of a, a location um, when we're trying to watch our dollars? And I certainly want our folks up there to have a much better facility, right? You can you can hardly walk by somebody in the hallways. It's mm -hmm. it's so tight and it's like a maze. So I don't want anybody to think I don't want to see a change there. We definitely need it.
but when you look at the size increasing by um, <clears throat> four, four times, more than four right. times, and especially the courts. So that was which was really interesting. Going from right. 2,100 square feet to 15,000 square feet, are they going to fund that whole portion? Because that, that's a huge amount, right? Yes. And we're talking one court room. One court room. With offices, of course, and we have the DAs that Correct. are up there. So I understand that. And of course, that courtroom now is not even enough for the jurors. But that's a huge increase. And is the state going to pay for that amount? I mean, if they're going right. to pay for that fully, well, yes. okay. But that's a huge increase. In yes, price. it is. And, and yes, that is, that is the plan. And um, their, uh, their facility, um, you know, of course, is growing by many, many times that. They have a challenge, though, with the state because it is a single courtroom, and the state will look at that and say, do we want to put this amount of money into a single courtroom that has a relatively, you know, low use rate? That's, and that's their, that's their challenge to, to face. But yes, that is, that is the plan that they would fund um, all of, of their project, as well as a shared um, work, because there would be shared parking, there would be shared infrastructure and so forth. Um, so we would be working jointly with them. If our project moves forward and theirs doesn't move forward, they would stay where they are in the existing building. So we could have our building in place and then the existing building would stay there until the state decides that yes, now's the time we're going to replace that. Is there, a, is there an opportunity perhaps to partner with like Nevada County uh, for the That's courts? Because right, I get that one courtroom is not <clears throat> that large, but is have we had those conversations or have the courts had the conversations about partnering with Nevada County? We currently partner with them just for um, the jail. housing the jail of, and, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know um, what the status of, of those conversations are. However, I do know that the, the process that the state goes through in prioritizing these, these court facilities has brought this location up to within a, you know, funding in the near future. Um, mm -hmm. So they go through their, their analysis it's, you know, doesn't mean that it's a sure thing, but um, they have, have done a, a needs analysis and a, a prioritization with uh, all of the factors that they consider, and, and it's moved up, um, you know, into, you know, one of the top teens. I, w I was just going to follow up um, that, you know, we're a shrinking pop full-time population up there, and so if you think of the countywide, I think we have 12,000 residents. Mm -hmm. And if you think about trying to build this sort of facility for every 12,000 residents we have in our county, yeah. we would, would never think? go there, right? And so I do think um, maybe we need to talk with our courts and see um, what we can do uh, to partner because the town of Truckee, I think, is about, I want to say about 20,000 people. Now that starts to maybe make and it isn't so hard for any of us to drive, just like we would ask Forest Hill people to come down to go to court in Auburn right. or in South Placer, that we mm -hmm. could ask people to drive to Truckee for, for jury and in court. But I know that we put on our boundaries in government so much and hold on to those so tightly, it doesn't make sense to the taxpayers. And I think we need to save money wherever yeah. we can. So I, I agree with that concept that they definitely need a new facility, but how big and how much are the assumptions in it? So, yeah. Can, are you done or do you um, more? Because I had a question too. Go ahead, I'll see if I have any. I, I think my overall question, Steve, is I so appreciate what your staff are doing with this mammoth list of projects. From my background and, and my experience, you sometimes need somebody outside of direct management of those projects to ask tough questions on those assumptions to save money for the taxpayers. And the buck stops up here with us when we're allocating the general fund dollars to match these projects. So 
I want to understand what your process is to really second guess assumptions. I know staff, you know, whether they're in a library or in a jail or in a courthouse or in a health and human services office, want space. But yes. space costs a lot of money, and we should be getting more efficient and effective with digital records, with digital everything, remote access. So I just want to make sure we're giving you the tools you need to have really objective outside thoughts before we spend that money. Because when it gets up here, then we look like we're not supporting. We want to support, right. but we have limits too. And if we spend all that money on that facility, there isn't money for the next need in the county. Right. And that's, that's the tough part for me. I just have that background to say, it all starts with the assumptions mm -hmm. that you use going in. Mm -hmm. And everything builds on that. By the time it gets to the board, we're asked to approve plans and specs where assumptions were made way back then. If we start over, now it's a time, we're gonna lose the grant, we're gonna you know, jeopardize funding. Right. And now we're the bad guys. And, and I know <clears throat> that's what we get paid the big bucks for, but <laughs> at times you know, I, wanna, I wanna have those assumptions um, thought through at the very beginning yes. before it gets to us. And as, as an example of that, the, the HHS building, huge building, mm -hmm. 147,000 square feet. We went through an exercise with their staff because like you said, with the boundaries of, of government, we have boundaries of departments as well. And um, so one of the things that we, um, we stressed and it reduced the overall program for that building is meeting spaces. So divisions would say, yeah, I need, this, I need this many meeting rooms. Well, we looked at it and we worked with them and cut down the number of meeting spaces in that building dramatically because they can be shared. And then on a larger scale, we, um, and we were able to afford that conference center there, we looked at that as, hey, this is a county-wide resource that you know, is not just an, an HHS uh, building resource. And so with that, um, other meeting spaces that, that uh, you know, programs may call for, we look at that building and say, hey, look, we can use that. And, and we um, plan to have a, an implemented means of reserving meeting spaces in other buildings other than your own, you know, electronically, um, so that can be done as well. And we had a conversation the other day um, about that outside set of eyes looking at things. And um, one thing that, that we would like to, to implement, and you know, when I was in the private sector, we did this a lot, is um, just review of drawings um, at you know, the different stages of development um, for those types of issues, both quality control and, and so forth but also what are other ways that we can do things to, to save money. The, the Tier 1 infrastructure project, we, we um, you know, were able to do some savings by using a, a um, I think it's an HD90, a, more like a plastic pipe versus like a cast iron pipe. And that, that was a, a less expensive and still approved by PCWA and NID. Um, so that was a, a savings and working with the contractor on, hey, how can you do your job more efficiently? Let us know and we can, we can work those savings out. And so that's what, you know, what I commented about the several hundred thousand dollars coming forth. But I, yeah, wholeheartedly agree with that and, and whatever we can do to make things as efficient as, as possible and, and utilize, you know, um, things that sit vacant, you know, are, are costly and, and um, not efficient. So yeah, I appreciate that comment. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Your ep I appreciate your team's efforts. You have a lot on your plate. And like I said, sometimes for you, the departments are saying, here's what we need. And it's those assumptions yes. that start the groundwork, the foundation for a project that then comes in at potentially many millions of dollars more than maybe would have been had different assumptions been. Yes. It's like I would like to have a bigger house, can you? <laughs> but what can I afford? Right. So I start at a different assumption level, right? Right. <laughs> I have actually a follow up, and, and so thank you. And, and to Supervisor Gustafson's point, um, 
I serve on CSAC, California State Association mm -hmm. of Counties, and so I've gotten to know some of the organizations that help support counties, whether that's software, um, construction projects, privatization of services. There are two companies, um, Vanner, yep. and then I think the other one, I think it's DRE. I have to go back and look. The gentleman emailed me just, I think, last week. So there are a couple of organizations that can come along counties that have consulting for contract mm -hmm. for big large contracts or construction projects <clears throat> i want to encourage us where it makes sense to consider you know you've got so much on your plate mm -hmm. you know can we utilize an outside company um, to help us do the work we need to do at a reduced cost in some way or to be more effective so i, right. I think it's worth looking at these organizations um, and i can forward to you and uh, to jane the, the names of the folks, because it may make sense. It may right. not, but I think it's worth us looking at organizations that are private that can help partner with us to help us be more efficient in how we spend our dollars. And we, and Vanner was integral in the development of SB 863 and 844 as we were working through the state's requirements to get the projects out on the street and one of the things that we do for larger or more complex projects is we utilize design build. Mm -hmm. And I am a proponent of it and was involved many, many, many years ago when initial uh, legislation for schools was, was um, put forth. But when we, when we utilize design build, it gives us a, a much better um, ability to choose a team that one, the architect and contractor want to work together, because that can be uh, contentious, you know, and two, we want to work with them and collaborate with them. So because of that, um, the morgue project, one of the most technically complex buildings within our entire portfolio was done with design build. And what we have typically done when we do design build, like with the HHS building, we have a good team on board, we don't hire an outside consultant. They're extremely expensive on the order of 5 to 8% of the construction cost for a construction manager to be on board. So um, we were successful with the morgue. We're, we're being successful with the HHS building. Um, and we'll continue to, to, to try to do that in the most efficient way possible. Like with the SB projects, um, we have um, a, uh, an individual who is basically kind of sort of our construction manager, and he worked at the jail down there throughout its construction and operation, and so he's our, our sounding board and our expert um, for, you know, way less than if we were to hire a so can I follow up on that? Yeah. So uh, companies like Vanner or mm -hmm. I don't know, DWE or whatever it is, I'll yeah. have to check. Um, would they would their utilizing them likely increase our costs by five to eight percent? Yes. You think? Okay. There, yes. And During, it's different. We're an organization that actually has a lot of resources. A smaller county exactly. may need something. They like that. absolutely. That's exactly what it what it's about. And. Our Animal Services Center was a, a huge success. It was a design-build contract, but we also had a construction manager on board. And looking back at that, that was right when I was joining the county, and I looked at that and I thought, wow, that, you know, we spent a lot of money on that. Very successful project. Um, but moving forward, I was looking towards being as efficient as we can be and not utilizing a construction manager um, when we're utilizing a design build delivery. They are they're an excellent resource for many things, whether it's you know developing our SB projects or quality control review of, of um, documents. Um, and then like you said, uh, counties that have fewer resources on staff, um, they're, they're definitely a, a benefit to those because you know they're they're talented experts, so. Thank you. Jean, you had a comment? You're, I think you're pretty Yes, good. thank you, Chair. Uh, just um, on point with 
Supervisor Gore and Gustafson's comments. Um, as Steve pointed out, when we last met with departments on the waterfall of moves in December of 2022, departments themselves identified the need for a common set of assumptions to guide how we're going to grow so that before we start this domino of moves, that we're doing it with not just what we know today, but with how we anticipate growing with certainly this considerable growth and development we're seeing in West Placer. Uh, Deputy Shauna Pervines is actually working with EPS out of the Bay Area that actually did this work for my prior agency in the 90s to help inform how we're going to grow relative to our community and in the context of what's happening today with remote work changing service models so that we will not start this waterfall of moves until we have that common set of assumptions for how we're going to do so responsibly. On the Eastern Placer Fund, uh, both uh, Chana Pervines and Stephanie Holloway and I met with the Nevada County CEO and the Town of Truckee manager uh, on January 23rd before our Tahoe board meeting to talk about working together. We're already partnering with them on HHS, on probation, on animal services, potentially on libraries, and identifying other areas, perhaps such as justice, that we could partner on going forward. And as luck would have it, I have a meeting scheduled with the courts tomorrow afternoon so we can start that conversation. Great. Oh, good. Thank you, Jean. <clears throat> Any other comments uh, from board member? Yes, uh, I'm, uh, it's amazing how much we're getting done. We don't realize that until you start writing it all down. Right. <laughs> I drive by the uh, HHS building every day, twice, at least twice, and I just, just see the changes gradually. The, changing landscape. When did we anticipate that being finished? The HHS building should be completed and we should be moving in uh, around the end of the calendar year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So I know we have, uh, we're running space uh, over by the library or by the uh, post office and yes. Department of Motor Vehicles for right. Children's System of Care. Right. Is that a lease, a long-term lease? That or? is. And Correct. so is it going to be commensurate of ending that when the move is taken care of? Yeah, I think our lease goes a little bit longer than that um, on that property, but gives us the flexibility to, to you know, move out um, when it's most appropriate. In other words, we're not having to move out, you know, prior to or, yeah. or enter into a, yeah. you know, lengthy lease that we would be paying for without being there. Would there be any uh, consideration of maybe keeping that lease for a uh, department that needed some more space right now? Uh, we can we can look at that. I I um, I'm very hesitant to to ever ask those questions because it's like, oh, do you need more storage space? A absolutely, I need more storage space. And so, you know, instead of thinning things down, we get more things. So, um, but yeah, we, we can look at that and see if that's a, a cost-effective um, alternative. Yeah, I, I think it would be appropriate to do that. Uh, okay. Yes, for uh, a particular uh, department that needed uh, a, a better, uh, just a better facility, mm -hmm. to put it that way. All right. Okay, okay. we'll do. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. As, wait, is there any public comment? Oh. Gotta, don't, don't leave yet. <laughs> Mr. Garabedian, hello. Yeah, Mike Garabedian, hello. I haven't been to, heard one of these discussions for a while, so I really don't know all the background here, but uh, I want to bring up a couple. Well, first, first of all, one of those projects looks like a classic wooey project, locating a building in a forest up at North Tahoe. Uh, but um, you know, it's not safe to build in the forest anymore. Um, so uh, I guess my main observation or question is about, uh, it, it, at least walking in here and sitting in the back, I don't hear any discussion of uh, development to serve uh, county facilities to serve West County. I don't know when that's going to happen. I see there's catch up trying to get, I guess, sheriff services there. Hear, hear that at one meeting. Uh, I mean, it, the impression I have, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that developers get to build wherever they want, and the county kind of later tries to figure out how to get the roads built and how to get the facilities there. 
and that kind of thing. So I'm just wondering when, when and where that, uh, when, when are we thinking ahead so we're not playing catch up? If maybe we're not playing catch up, but so yeah, that's, that's really my b basic question is, uh, what about, you've talked about a couple areas of the county and here, and uh, what about uh, building needs in the rest of the county? What are the plans for that and when and stuff like that? And maybe that's not an easy answer. Well, we just did the coroner's facility last year. Sorry. Uh, we're also in planning to do a, uh, uh, for the uh, Auburn, or the Plas Santucci Justice Center, a vocational uh, housing for some of the inmates that need training. And we also have a mental, mental facility proposed and it was on, on the uh, schedule. It was on the, 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 uh, uh, pro, the pilot, the, what's it? PowerPoint. The PowerPoint, that's it, it was on yeah, there. Yeah, and the so, elections building uh, is down the there. The elections building uh, down there. So we've got a lot of projects in the Western to serve our residents in the Western Oh, I see what you mean. The people yeah. go, go yeah. to that area from right. way out there near Sutter right. County. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Anybody online? I online All right. Thank you, Steve, so much. That's a very uh, informative uh, presentation.